paper modeling for beginners. Well, I've now built enough paper shipping container models to have a little advice for those starting out building paper models. I'll give you three overall considerations and a bonus tip at the end of the video. Hey, it's paper modeling, so the first thing is paper. And what you really need to consider is what are you using the paper for? If you're going to be laminating the paper on a substrate, then you don't need really thick, heavy paper. You don't need to spend that money. You might need to bend it around a curve. You might want it to take on some texturing of the substrate. So you just need regular paper. But if, like me, you're making shipping containers or something else where you're relying on the paper, what you printed with the image, to provide some structure or stability for the model, then you need to use some heavier weight paper. Now, one of the recommendations that's often made is to use matte photo paper, 48 pound in particular if you're using an inkjet printer. And that really does look really good. Here's a shot on the B-roll of the same model printed on the presentation paper that I use and 48 pound matte photo paper. And the colors are definitely brighter. The details are a little bit crisper. It may not even be a noticeable difference on camera, but it is there. Uh, so that's something to consider. Now, if like me, you don't have a good color inkjet printer at home, you're going to have to go to Kinko's or Staples or Office Max or something in order to print. And you'll be printing on a laser printer. And I haven't found 48 pound matte photo paper to print on a laser printer. I, I, there was some at an Office Max that I stumbled upon, but I couldn't buy any. Um, someone left it behind and I acquired it. But uh, it really is a good stuff. Now here's a picture of what I use for making the containers. It is 40 pound presentation paper. It's got a little bit of a matte photo finish to it, a little bit of lacquer on it, but nowhere near as much as the matte photo paper does. I'm not saying this is the best stuff to use. I got it really cheap. Um, I think it's important that it be bright, and you'll notice this is 152 brightness. So the whites are going to come out really crisp, and I think that's important. Now, one of the things about matte photo paper you need to know is that if you're going to weather with colored pencils, and I'll cover that in a, in a moment, it's going to not take, it's, the colors are not going to take very well on the matte photo paper. Here's a a shot on the b-roll where I colored across I, I put some matte photo paper on top of my presentation paper and I just tried to keep the pressure on the pencil even and I went across that gap and you can see that the top layer the matte photo paper did not take much of the pigment so it's going to be hard to weather things if you're using the matte photo paper next is adhesives yeah you can probably get by using Elmer's glue and a glue stick that you find around the house now the problem with the white glue, and I use paper glue for a lot of my projects, uh, is that it will cause the, it'll soak into the paper and it'll cause the paper to wrinkle a little bit or to become wavy. And that's not cool. And it also takes quite a while to dry. Uh, and so one of the, uh, the Digcom Designs website recommended using gel adhesive. And so I picked some of that up. Here's a picture, there's a picture of that. Uh, on the b-roll this scotch gel adhesive that I got and I gotta tell you that makes a world of difference it's got kind of a sponge applicator on one side kind of a more fine not exactly pinpoint but a fine point applicator on the other side and both of those are useful but that foam applicator is really useful to spread the adhesive out and it dries enough that you can let go of the joint in 10 seconds or so and it does not seem to dimple the surfaces as much as white glue or uh, paper glue that I was using previously. So I really make it recommend the gel glue. Now glue sticks, hopefully somebody can leave a comment and tell me how to use glue sticks. I started out using a regular glue stick and it wasn't working that well. The Team Track Models website recommended using extra strength glue sticks, so I went out and got some of that. I do think that works a little bit better, but it still sucks. 
it just doesn't seem to hold the paper to the substrate like it should. So even if I wait overnight, I press it down really hard, I wait overnight, it just doesn't seem to work. So I'm really struggling with the uh, glue stick. Now in terms of weathering, here's a shot of some weathering I did in a container. I try to do that when the paper, you know, before I cut it out so I can just go straight across the surface. And I've used the brown to simulate a little, pulling a little bit of the rust coming down from the corner castings on the containers where the rust might come down. Um, a little bit of that on the bottom of the container all the way around uh, to simulate the dirt that it might pick up from being set down on trucks and on the ground. And then I used a light gray color to both lighten the top of the container as well as to pull down some of the um, white lettering and I used a light blue pencil to pull down a little bit of the Amazon marking there, the Amazon smile marking. Um, pretty subtle effects but nonetheless um, I think worth doing. And now for my bonus tip. One of the keys to making good paper models is scoring and then folding along the score. Well when you score and then you bend on that score mark you expose the core of the paper which is bright white and so that looks really bad and you'll see some reviews of uh, paper models on the internet where people aren't covering up that white and that white looks really garish and the solution to that is to get one of these which is a artist's uh, marker and it's got large felt tip uh, tips I'll show that to you on the b-roll and get that in a medium gray uh, and don't necessarily rely on the caps. I looked at the cap on this one and I thought, oh, that's, that's pretty good. That's a gray color. If I'd read the label, it said coal gray. Well, it's almost black. That's too dark. You need something a little bit lighter than that. Um, but you can bend the paper along the score mark and then just run that felt tip marker across there and that will absorb into that uh, white, that, that white that's really bright and dull that right down, it's like magic. And I do that on the edges of the paper where they might be visible after the model is folded together, uh, even before I put it together, because of course once you put it together the glue may prevent absorption of the, uh, of the markers uh, ink. And so you want to um, do as much of this as you can before you assemble the model. So that's my bonus tip. I hope you'll give paper modeling a try. It's a lot of fun. Until next time, this is Bob Johnson with PK&W Railroad signing off. Keep on modeling.